Hello, everyone. So great to see you all joining today. Um, we're going to get started in, oh, I see everyone's connecting to audio. So we'll wait for just a moment. I see that everyone's joining now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to get started in a few minutes. We're probably going to start around uh, 12.05. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to ask you to mute as you're joining, if you don't mind, and then um, we will get started at 12.05 ish. While you're here early, if you want to go ahead and go grab um, some pieces of paper, some markers, some pens, we are going to be drawing in real life today. Um, so uh, go ahead and collect your art supplies in these last few minutes here before we get started with the main activities. Hi folks, so those who are just joining, um, we're gonna get started at around 12.05. Um, so before we jump in, wanna make sure that you are muted. Um, we'll have some time to chat a little later on, but for, we're gonna start off muted and then um, go ahead and collect some pieces of paper, some markers, pens, et cetera. Uh, we're gonna be drawing in real life today. So we're going to make sure you have all those supplies ready to go for when we get to that point. <laughs> Carrie, I just saw your face and you're like, we're drawing in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Who else yeah. is sick of staring at a screen? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will have to momentarily stare at a screen, but then um, we'll get to transition back to analog life for a little bit at least. We want to do something fun while people are joining. If you want to say where you're joining us from in the chat, um, that's always fun to do. And we can read some of those. Um, we want to talk about where you're at. Um, I personally am in New Hampshire right now. Uh, Nadra, if you want to. Yeah, I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts, near Inman Square. Ooh, we got some folks from Idaho, all around Chicago, Oregon, Massachusetts. This is awesome. Woohoo! Look at where everyone's coming from. We got Canadians in the house, New York City folks in the house, Ipswich, Detroit, Malden, Rhode Island. This is awesome. Thanks, folks. Oh, someone in Mumbai. I don't know what time of day it is there, but thank you for joining us. I think we can go ahead and start sharing. Awesome. Great. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we're really, really excited to have you here. Uh, Nadrette and I have been working in this realm for a little while now, and we're super excited to share what we've been working on. Um, and this is, of course, a webinar about a webinar slash workshop about creating personal resilience while working remotely. Something we can all use a little help in. So we, before we jump in, I, we wanted to introduce ourselves. So my name is Liz and I'm an experienced strategist at MadPow in Boston. Um, and then so you can get to know us a little bit better, we have some fun facts for you here. So my fun fact is that I love to roller skate, even if I have to do it with a mask on. Um, it's a little more challenging with a mask on, but still lots of fun. Hi everyone, my name is Nedret. Um, I'm a senior experience designer at MadPow. And my fun fact is that I have recently become uh, a parent to these two kittens, Kaya and Nova. And believe it or not, they're actually comfortable in this position. <laughs> All right, so. Just to give you a little bit of idea about what to expect from this workshop, um, we've created this visual to show you. So first we're gonna do a quick intro presentation. It's gonna be a few minutes, uh, just to give you an idea of why we're talking about this, why resilience and why resilience at work, especially in remote work. Then we're gonna go into a, the largest chunk of our workshop today and our webinar, which is actually activities, which will include drawing. That's why we've asked you to have a pen or a marker and some pieces of paper with you. We'll ask you to reflect on the things that you've drawn, and then we'll split you up into discussion groups of three, uh, where, you, where you'll kind of share what your reflections and what you've noticed about your drawings. And then at the very end, we'll have a short time dedicated to an optional group share out. So if anything that you've discussed with the folks in your breakout rooms sounds like you want to share it with everyone else, you'll be able to do that at the very end. 
All right. So let's start with this. Awesome. So we want to talk about why resilience, why this is that we're focusing on today. So um, like many of you, I have been working remotely since March. So haven't been back to the office in a little bit other than to collect my uh, since now dead office plants. Um, but since we've all started working remotely, we've really started to see that people are starting to think about where this might go into the future. So a lot of companies are reporting that right now they're just transitioning to being remote first. So Dropbox just announced that there'll be remote first. So the expectation is you work from home, you come in when you need to. Um, so as we're starting to see that transition, we're starting to see that people can be really successful in working from home. A lot of people are thinking that this is a one-way door that's been opened and we can't go back the other way. So it's going to be very challenging for companies to say, you know, you have to be here 100% in person all the time, with the exception of, of course, essential workers. Um, and so this is a trend that we think will continue uh, beyond COVID-19, beyond 2021, uh, even beyond that. And we see that in some of these trends listed here on the left. So when asked if people would like to work remotely, yeah, at least some of the time, on some of those indicators. Okay. Oops. Someone not muted. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to, you know, if we want to work remotely, at least some of the time, around 98% of people are saying, yes, you know, at least some of the time I want to continue working from home. And when asked if people would recommend uh, working home to working from home to others, 97% uh, of people report that yes, you know, I would recommend this to my friends, to my family. Um, but the flip side of that is that we have some struggles while working remotely. So I'm sure that we've all experienced these in some ways. Um, you know, having trouble unplugging after work. It's a little bit more challenging when there's no commute in between you and home. You know, your desk is always there. Laptops always there, always ready and easy to continue working. Um, another issue is loneliness with working from home, especially if you live alone, it can be really challenging to continually connect and feel connected to those around us. Collaboration has some challenges with working from home. So if you're in a collaborative industry like we are, it can be a little bit more difficult to work from home with the the used to being into in-person collaboration. You know, we used to be able to write on the same sticky notes and be on the whiteboard together. And now we have to do it a little more virtually. Another issue can be time zone challenges. So while we're all remote and across the world, like we are right now, uh, you know, there can be some challenges with someone being in a completely different time zone than you. Other people have some issues with staying motivated, easy to get a little more distracted when we're at home. Other folks are having some trouble taking their vacation time that's allotted to them, feeling like, ah, eh, you know, I'm working from home. I don't need this vacation time right now. Um, though we encourage you to take your vacation time if you have it. Uh, and then of course, some other random issues. And then last is finding reliable Wi-Fi. Um, I was sure a challenge that we've all faced and hopefully none of us will face it in the next hour while we're here together. But if we drop out, say lovey, that's what happens. <laughs> Awesome, thanks Liz. And another thing we wanna do is just talk about what we mean by resilience. Uh, there are a lot of definitions to resilience. We like this definition because it feels the most tangible. Just the ability of a system to absorb disturbance and still retain its basic function and structure. If you're just joining, please make sure you mute yourself. Um, so this, quote is actually from Resilience Thinking, um, this book here mentioned, um, if you'd like to read it, it's a great read. So one of the other reasons we really like this definition is because it relates to the elements and dimensions that we came across in our research. So when we're talking about the elements of resilience, these are um, burnout and recharge. And yes, that icon there is an image of a human who has lost its head. Uh, we particularly searched for the word dead and wanted to find an icon that really represented that. Um, and that's what you see here. And then recharge on the other side is the ability to kind of fulfill yourself with other things that make you feel like you have more energy and don't have to become the person on the left. So when talking about the dimensions of resilience, these are three that came across in our research. And what we found is when you have these three, when you have social connection, when you have healthy boundaries, and when you can feel like you have autonomy, 
you feel like you can recharge. The lack of these tends to be when people feel burnt out. So you don't have social connection, you don't have healthy boundaries, and you don't feel autonomous. Of course, these are only a few of the dimensions, but these are the ones that we've focused in our research and our uh, interventions that we've designed. So one of those interventions that we've designed is actually the activity that we're going to take you through right now. So um, we're going to grab our pens and papers and markers and all those great things. Uh, we've got some instructions here, and then we're going to break for about 10 minutes to uh, work on these. Uh, and by break, I mean, you stay right here, but we're going to work on it and then we'll come back. Um, so what I want you to do in the next 10 minutes is we're going to spend some time drawing a map of the office you worked in prior to COVID. So if you worked from home way long ago, you've been working from home for forever, you can think as far back as you need to to get into that office space that you worked in prior to COVID. If you're a student and you've been you know, learning remotely, you can think about the classroom or the studio space. Um, but we just want to think about the next place, the last place we were before COVID where we were working together on a common goal. So what we're going to do is spend 10 minutes drawing any, any and everything that was a part of the office that can include any outdoor or offsite areas that were a part of your office life. So the park that you always went to when you were on break, the coffee shop that you would go to get a coffee for in the morning, all of those parts that encompass your office life. And we don't want to worry about making it a perfect blueprint. We're not going to have an architectural drawing competition here. There's not going to be judged. We're not even going to see these. So this is really just to capture the essence of the office. So focus more on the emotional aspect than the uh, perfect dimensioning and blueprinting. Um, I'm sure there are per some perfectionists in the group. So uh, I have my eye on you. Um, <laughs> and think about where you worked and where you recharged in the office. So maybe you only worked at your desk, maybe you worked in your desk in one of the uh, surrounding collaborative offices. Um, but think about too, where you recharged. Was it the water cooler? Was it the ping pong table? And as much as possible, capture all of these things on your map with annotations, labels, icons, colors. If you wanna go full into this and get some glitter out, get some paint, all, you know, all power to you. I'm excited to see what you come up with. Okay, so we're going to start this timer for about 10 minutes. I'm going to check in on you and let you know when you're getting close to time. So um, we'll be ending at about this. We'll be back in here around uh, 1224. I'm seeing it's 1214 right now. So um, yep, see you in about, uh, we'll go to 10, 1225 because it's 1215 now. I talked long enough to give you an extra minute. So we'll go ahead and take that time and we'll see you in 10 minutes. We'll be right here if you have any questions, feel free to message us in the chat. All right, so next we're gonna go into some reflection. You've probably already naturally done this as you were drawing, uh, unless you were focusing on how perfect you're making it, which we told you not to do. Um, so this part is really to get you thinking about these questions if you haven't already. So maybe jot down some notes at some point, you will have to talk about this with another human. Um, so when you're looking at your office mental model, where did you recharge in the office? How did that happen? Did it involve other people? Did you go to a quiet corner by yourself? Did you go out for walks? Did you get together a group of people and go get coffee? And what do you miss most about the office? Do you miss the office banter? Or maybe that's something you don't miss at all and you really like how peaceful and quiet it is at home. Or maybe it's not peaceful and quiet at home because you have a lot of children. Um, so maybe it's the complete opposite and you miss that about the office. And then lastly, think about boundaries. So how did they manifest? Um, there's the physical boundary of walking into an office and walking out of it. Are there others that you can think about? Just take a few minutes to jot down some notes or just think about it if you're good at retention. And later we'll put you into breakout groups. Um, after our next activity so that you can actually share your reflections with others. Uh, so I'm going to set a timer for uh, just three minutes here while we uh, while we wait till so we'll get to 1230. So I'm going to set that timer and then go ahead and add those additional thoughts, feelings, reflections. You can jot them down, you can draw them, write them out, um, however works best for you. We'll have three minutes and then we'll return.
Okay, it's 1230. So we're going to move on to our next phase. So we're going to start with a fresh sheet of paper. We're going to do something similar, but instead of drawing the office that you worked in before, we want you to draw your home office that you're working in right now. So it can include any of your outdoor, your offsite areas. You know, if you have a balcony, that's where you like to have your coffee in the morning, include that. If there's a dog park that you meet all your friends at um, and have a nice socially distanced lunch together occasionally, you can include that. Um, but we want you to draw where you work and where you recharge. So be honest with ourselves about where we work. You know, I know we all like to think that we can put the laptop away at the end of the day, but sometimes the phone will sneak out and we'll read a few emails on the couch when we should be relaxing. It's okay, you can put that there. No judgment here, we all do it. Um, and think about where you recharge too. So do you have the opportunity to recharge in the kitchen, you know, get a snack during the day? Do you recharge strictly at the end of the day when it comes to sitting on the couch or going to sleep? Um, so think about where you work, where you recharge. And again, don't worry about this being perfect. Um, not going to judge on looks, but just think about some of these ideas and where they where they might fit in your home office. And hopefully this will be a little bit easier because you can just look around. Um, and this will take us to 1240. So we'll have about nine minutes total. I'm gonna set the timer and I'll check in with you in a few minutes uh, to let you know when we have a five minute warning and then a one minute warning. Okay, so we'll see you soon. Okay, I have 12.40. So we're going to uh, move on into the next bit. All right, so this should look familiar. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing where we reflect on how we're working now. So when you drew your home office, you've probably already done this, but again, think about where different modes of work activity and recharge activity happen. Maybe you're gonna draw boundaries. Some people we worked with actually drew a little fence where they had boundaries manifest um, and social connection. Um, they use different colors to represent that. Perhaps there's a space in your home where you feel really autonomous, where you can get really heads down work done. And then you also wanna think about where you replenish your physical and mental energies. So just make sure you capture these on your map with annotations, labels, icons, stickers, glitter, <laughs> soil, leaves, whatever you find near you. Um, like we said, you don't have to share this with anyone. <laughs> um, you can go as experimental as you'd like. <laughs> so Liz will set maybe another three minutes. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go till 1245 on this one, um, just because I like round numbers. And uh, that'll be great. So we'll do about four minutes here. All right, we're at 1245. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our next slide here, our next activity. Okay, so um, now that we have our mental models, we have our uh, reflections, what we're going to do is we're going to break you out into groups of two or three. Um, most of you will be in groups of three, there might be a handful in groups of two. But what we're going to do is we want you to share um, your drawings if you'd like, but definitely your reflections, the things that you realized through doing this exercise. Oh, that was my timer, sorry. Um, and each of you will have around two minutes to share. So we're going to be in this for about six minutes total. So three people, two minutes each to share. Um, we'll let you self-regulate that. So remember to talk about things like what surprised you, uh, what have you noticed in the shift from office to home? And then I want you to think about something that you can do at home that you couldn't do in an office. So in the past, when we've had this activity, um, some folks have reported that they, you know, get to take guitar breaks in between meetings. They get to strum a little bit on the guitar and then get back to work. So something cool that you could do at home that you couldn't do in the office. Um, I know that this activity can bring up a lot of sometimes feelings of missing the office, sometimes some thoughts of like understanding that the boundaries have shifted a little bit. So we want to think about the great things about working remotely too. Okay, so Nadret is going to hit go on breakout rooms and we will see you back here in about six minutes. Um, Godspeed.
<laughs> All right, awesome. everyone should be back. Great, thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, <laughs> so um, we're back. <laughs> we're back. And this is our, our last slide. This is the last part of our agenda. So if anyone wants to share anything that came up in their discussions around things that surprised you, anything that you noticed about the shift from office to home, or maybe something that you can do in, at home that you couldn't do in the office, uh, feel free to write it in the chat if that feels like a more appropriate channel, or you can raise your little icon, your hand icon in Zoom. Um, and we can either call on you or we can read out loud what you wrote. Um, like I said, this part is completely optional. The, the goal of this is to act as an intervention for you to get thinking about these things, not for us to tell you what to do because you all know yourselves better than we ever could. So is there anyone who wants to share anything here? Liz, do you want to read out anything from the chat? Sure, I'm seeing uh, Heather's written that there's more time with the pet coworkers, both dogs and cats, which is great. Yes, I like spending some time with my cat too, but he doesn't necessarily, he's not a very good coworker, but he's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, uh, someone's chatted with Ross, we recharged by the nature right outside of our home offices. The no commute is awesome. That's a good point, Renee. You know, sometimes I feel like I miss my commute a little bit. That's where I got my reading done, all my podcasting done. Um, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some days I miss it. Some days I think what, what what's wrong with me for missing my commute. Um, someone says more time with family, which is good and or bad. Touche. Um, someone says I'm so behind on my podcast right now. Same. Yeah, I gotta. I always try to go for a walk at the end of the day so I can catch up on what I'm missing. Um, Surprised how much of my recharge space uh, overlaps with my working spaces with a little bit of a sad face from Beth. Um, totally understand. Hopefully this activity was helpful in bringing some of those things to light and, you know, we can all set our own boundaries in our own spaces. So hopefully this helps see what else is um, in terms of boundary building. Um, it is really easy, Caroline, to not move at all during the day. Yep, I try to build, build in a little bit of extra time in between my meetings so I can stretch in between. Um, see, any of these you're reading that really stick out to you, Nadrette? Yeah, um, I like the midday recharges. Haley, same. I go for a bike ride at the middle of the day if it's nice enough out. Even if it's 30 minutes, I'm like, I have to leave this room. Um, and I'm surprised by how awesome it feels. And then I'm like, oh, at the end of the day, I could actually sit on the couch and not feel super guilty. That's great. <laughs> oh, and some people saying time's completely filled, no matter how much you have to do, it always seems like more to do. I completely understand that. Um, hard going from an office with 9,000 plus to just one. Totally. Mm -hmm. I miss my coworkers a lot. Um, it's really hard to just see them on a computer screen all day. I'd like to grab coffee with them occasionally too. Yeah. And I know we're reading these out, but if anyone wants to share, actually speak to other humans here, you're welcome to do that. We just don't want to put anyone on the spot. So if anyone wants to, we'll create a little bit of space for you to chime in. Uh, maybe raise your hand. I, I don't know if there's a virtual hand, but I can see your physical hands. Um, so if you want to chime in and say anything, there's space for that as well. Okay, if not though too. Yeah, optional. This whole part is optional. Okay, I don't see any hands being raised, but though, well, thank you for all sharing those things in the chat. Um, sorry if I skipped over you and you rose your hand. Uh, that's the difficult part about not being in person. A little harder to see those uh, physical body language cues. <laughs> um, yeah, the conversations at the kitchen table at work. Yeah, I miss those too. Yeah. Just so, People know, one, what we've been doing with our current project, this is all based on an intervention that we designed for a current project that we're on um, for an undisclosed client. Um, we discovered a few types of tools that actually help with those informal communications. Um, there's one that's called highfidelity.com. If you wanna check it out, it's a virtual soundscape. So you can be a little Pac-Man or a little Pac-Person and you can like roam around and hear people. We've been having a lot of meetings in it, especially when we're like collaborating in Miro or Mural and we don't really need to see each other's facial uh, expressions or body language. There's another one called Tandem. 
That's another great tool. Um, it lets you see what other people are working in. So it, as if you were to walk by their desk and see like, oh, that person's in on Outlook or that person's working in a Google Doc. Um, if you're into games, gather.town is another one. Um, it's like an eight bit map and you can move from room to room. You can even be in a castle theme together. Uh, you can screen share, share video. Um, we're finding that there are a bunch of tools out there that let you collaborate without needing to be on video and watch yourself all day. Because we've been finding that that's one of the most exhausting parts about being on video. It's not that you are being watched, it's that you're watching yourself. <laughs> like We're <laughs> all pretty self-absorbed and when we see a video of ourselves there, we tend to watch ourselves and not other people. Uh, so that's one of the ways that we've been kind of combating the Zoom fatigue by just finding different types of tools that allow different types of informal communication. Yeah, and I've actually, I've linked a few in the chat, but we're gonna go ahead and send a follow-up uh, email with all the links that we've talked about today too. Um, but I've linked some of them in the chat if you wanna just play around with them, check them out. Um, they're lots of fun. Nice change of pace for sure. Um, and then this is, we're about at 12.59. So I think we'll uh, go ahead and just say thank you. <laughs> it's uh, been really awesome to share this, this uh, activity with you all. And then um, Nadrette will go ahead and share our contact information if you'd like to reach out to us, if you wanna talk about resilience in the workplace, if you wanna talk about the future of work, if you're interested in us running a similar workshop for your team, We'd love it if you reached out to us on LinkedIn. Um, email is okay too, but we prefer LinkedIn. Um, awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, we'll see you soon. See you on the internet. <laughs> Bye, Carrie. Bye, Caroline. Bye, all. Bye, Tom. Bye Beth. Bye, everyone. Bye, Ned. <laughs> that I don't have time to name my name. <laughs> the rest of your day. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Bye, folks. Bye.